welcome back students in our this session and this is your assignment number two of the chapter the digestive system now as i told you in our earlier assignment about the four types of teeth that is incisors canines premolars and molars now i'll show you the diagram of incisor in this you can see that this type of teeth is known as incisor teeth and this incisors they are responsible for biting and cutting off the food item then the canines the canines are the pointed ones and these are responsible for piercing and tearing of the food then come to the premolar now the premolars they are responsible for grinding off food and the molars they are responsible for crushing as well as for grinding of the food substance now you can see the diagram of this molar and it is divided into three parts the upper part is known as the crown the middle part is known as the neck and the lower part is known as the root so children you have to draw all these four diagrams in your biology copy these are the four different types of teeth and this you have to draw in your copy now come to the uh, chapter the digestion of food it begins with the teeth therefore you must keep your teeth clean and healthy by brushing them properly and taking care of them now this you all know children that the digestion it takes place it starts from the teeth only because whenever you eat the food you always first cut the food and then you bite it and then you chew it so the digestion starts from the teeth only so therefore this is your responsibility for keeping the teeth clean and how can you keep your teeth clean by brushing them properly and by taking proper care of them now although the tooth animal is the hardest substance in the body it tends to be eroded and destroyed by the acid produced in the mouth now this we all know that the tooth animal the upper layer of the tooth is known as the tooth animal and it is the hardest layer uh, in our body but it sometimes it gets eroded and destroyed because of the acids that produced in our mouth and sometimes in that condition when we eat too much of sticky food items like chocolates burgers noodles etc in both the cases the tooth enamel destroyed and got damaged so this is our responsibility that we keep our teeth clean we brush them properly so that our tooth enamel enamel do not get break now we come to the next topic that is the digestive system of human beings now you already know that digestion in humans is extracellular and involves many organs now extracellular means that it takes place outside the cells so the, we can say that the digestion is a extracellular process it does not takes part inside the cell it takes place outside the cells and it involves many organs like mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus now these organs are responsible for ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection and together constitute the digestive system now all these organs are responsible for different types of processes and these processes i have already discussed with you in our first assignment and these all processes they together constitute and they form the digestive system now the digestive system comprises the alimentary canal and associated digestive glands now we can see what are those glands now the organs of the digestive system now as i told you that there are many organs involved in the process of digestion so the first organ is mouth now the mouth is food is taken in the mouth and masticated before swallowing masticated means chewing now the food whatever food we eat we first take it in our mouth then we chew it and then we swallow it now this mastication is brought about by teeth 
jaw bone and muscles now all these three things they are responsible for cutting and for chewing the food item now food is chewed and broken down into smaller pieces and this is called mechanical digestion it prepares the food for digestion by the action of enzymes which is called chemical digestion so you can see that the broken the breaking down of uh, food into smaller pieces is known as mechanical digestion and with the help of certain enzymes when the food get digested that is known as chemical digestion now the three pairs of salivary glands are also present in the mouth these secrete saliva and saliva lubricates and softens the food and helps in swallowing now this we all know that our mouth contains a special type of gland that is known as salivary gland and it produces saliva and this saliva is responsible for the lubrication and for softening of the food substance saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase or ptyline which acts on starch to convert it into maltose now this enzyme which is present in the saliva it is responsible for converting the starch into maltose that is the reason that when we chew the boiled rice or boiled potato nicely it is starts tasting sweet just because of this uh, enzyme which is present in our saliva we, when we, whenever we eat the boiled rice or boiled potato it always gives the sweet taste because it changes the starch into maltose now here you can see some functions of saliva first is it aids swallowing it acts as a lubrication during the chewing of the food third it facilitates speech by lubricating the tongue and lips fourth it is a solvent which carries the molecules that convey the taste of food to the taste buds fifth it assists in the digestion of the starch sixth it helps in an antibacterial effect and seventh is it helps to prevent mouth infections and tooth decay so these are few functions of saliva the food from the mouth is passed into the stomach through the esophagus now this esophagus is known as the food pipe i'll show you the diagram and in that diagram you can easily see these organs now esophagus or vent pipe is about 25 cm long tube and the digestion does not takes place in esophagus so the when we take the uh, food from the mouth the digestion does not takes place in the windpipe or esophagus but it always takes place in the stomach the muscles of the esophagus contract one after the other in a wave like motion the wave like motion of the muscles pushes the food along the body and is called peristalsis now you can see in the diagram so here's the diagram you can see the muscular wall of intestine and the circular muscles contracting this muscles they contract and expand when the food goes inside the esophagus inside the windpipe and this contraction and expanding is responsible is helpful for getting the food inside now you can see this wave like motion and it whenever it contract and expand it always do it in a wave like motion and this wave like motion of uh, contracting the muscles of esophagus this movement is known as peristalsis now the second organ is stomach stomach lies in the abdomen and is a large sac it is about 30 cm long shaped like the letter j with muscular walls it secretes the gastric juice which helps in digestion this we all know that our stomach it secretes a kind of a juice that is gastric juice which helps in the digestion process it usually takes about 2 hours for all the food to move out of the stomach into the intestine in the form of a semi solid food called chyme now gastric glands release gastric juices 
like hydrochloric acid and mucus then gastric juice contains two enzymes that is pepsin and renin enzyme now pepsin changes proteins into peptones and hydrochloric acid secreted by stomach helps this conversion and also kills many harmful bacteria now these are few gastric juices which are present inside the stomach and is responsible and is helpful for the digestion of food substance now as i told you that this pepsin enzyme it is responsible for changing the proteins into peptones and the hydrochloric acid which is present inside the uh, gastric glands it is responsible for the uh, secretion of uh, by the stomach and helps in the conversion of food and it also kills many harmful bacteria now renin changes the milk protein that is casein the milk protein is also known as casein into insoluble curd mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions so you can see here that the proteins under the with the help of pepsin it convert into peptones and casein with the help of the renin enzyme it converted into convert curd now here you can see the diagram of the human digestive system with its functions now first we see the tongue now the tongue you can see here in the diagram this line shows the tongue the function of tongue is it helps to roll food into a soft mass called the bolus then pushes food to the back of the throat the tongue is responsible for helping the, for rolling the food into a soft mass it converts the food into a soft mass and for pushing the food to the back of the throat now the next one is teeth chewing breaks up food into small pieces now teeth are responsible for chewing as well as for breaking and cutting the food particles into smaller pieces then salivary glands it it is present inside the mouth and it produces the saliva and as i told you the different functions of saliva that it is responsible for softening of food and for chewing and for giving the lubrication to the food now next is trachea or windpipe or we can say it esophagus also this part is known as esophagus now this is responsible for the uh, for the uh, for collecting the food this part esophagus is responsible for carrying the food from the mouth to the stomach and this trachea is known as the windpipe by which we can easily breathe it out and breathe in next come to the liver the liver this green part is the liver and it is the largest organ in the body and it produces the bile juices then the gall bladder you can see this part is known as gall bladder and it stores the bile juice then pancreatic duct this part is known as pancreatic duct then the large intestine the large intestine contains the three uh, three things one is colon second is calcium and the third one is appendix now this colon it absorbs the water this part is known as colon and it absorbs the water from the undigested food then calcium this part is known as calcium and the this one is known as appendix and these have no known functions in humans now the next part we see the nasal cavity leads from the nose to the windpipe this nasal cavity is connected with the nose to the windpipe and it is responsible for inhaling air in and out then palate it separates the nasal cavity from the mouth it closes the nasal cavity you can see in the diagram that this is no, the no, nose cavity or the nasal cavity and this part is known as palate and it separates the nasal cavity from the mouth 
and it closes the nose cavity when you swallow then the bolus of food this small circular thing is known as the bolus of food or we can say this article of food then epiglottis epiglottis this part is known as epiglottis flap that closes the opening to the windpipe when you swallow preventing food from entering the lungs and preventing you from choking while you eat it prevents this epiglottis prevents uh, the choking of the food then the esophagus it is a tube carrying the food from the mouth to the stomach now next is diaphragm diaphragm this part is known as diaphragm and its function is that it's a sheet of muscles separating the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity this upper part is the chest cavity and this lower part is the abdominal cavity so this diaphragm it separate out the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity then the bile duct here you can see this part is known as the bile duct then stomach here you can see this is the stomach part and it mix the food with the gastric juices here there are gastric juices certain enzymes which helps in the digestion of food so when the food enters from the mouth through the esophagus it connect it uh, it get stored in the stomach and there with the help of certain enzymes it get digested and broken down into smaller pieces so that it can easily digested by the other body organs then pancreas you can see this picture of pancreas it produces pancreatic juice and all these juices are responsible in the digestion of food then duodenum this part is known as duodenum here the food is mixed with the intestinal juice or pancreatic juice and the bile juice now the small intestine you can see this these are the small intestine and this blue one is the large intestine and this is small intestine is again made up of two parts one is duodenum and the other one is ileum now ileum is the digested food is absorbed into the blood with the help of the ileum the food which get digested in the stomach it then will, it supplies to the blood with the help of this ileum then the rectum here the undigested food is formed into feces the undigested food comes out from the rectum in the form of feces then the anus exists for feces you, so these are the human body system and all these the organs they have the different functions also so this is the human digestive system with its different functions now you have to learn the functions of each and every part very nicely and uh, keep it in your mind and always you have to learn it very properly now thank you and as soon i upload the next session for you